Welcome back, church family, to another devotional in our Spirit and Life series on love. Last week, I spoke to you about how we are to love God with all that we are and how to love God that way we are to get to know Him. To, to truly love God, we are to, to know uh, God and spend time in His Word and allow the Holy Spirit to transform us from the inside out. I read from the book of 1 John chapter 4, uh, verses 7 through 10, where we hear Paul telling us that everyone who loves is born of God and knows God, because God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love. The this the author is talking about is the atoning sacrifice Jesus made on the cross, giving up his life so that we might be made right with God and know God and his love. Now, knowing and loving God is not the end of the journey. It enables us to address the second part of the greatest commandment, and that is to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, you might be thinking, okay, I can believe that I can love God with the help of the Holy Spirit, but loving my neighbor? Have you met my neighbor? That seems like a big, pretty big request. But you see, it wasn't a request or even a suggestion. It was a command. Jesus tells us at the end of his earthly ministry that we are to go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. So it goes way farther than, I think this might be a good idea if you aren't too busy sort of thing. God has commanded us to love one another, so it must be important not only for our neighbors, but for our eternal souls as well. But how do we get there? And how does loving God and loving others reflect Jesus? Well, that's where 1 John chapter 4, 11 through 12 come in. Paul tells us that if God loved us in this way, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God remains in us and his love is perfected in us. You see, when we allow God to remain in us, as we are transformed into Christ's image day by day, we are reflecting the character of God to others. You see, God is spirit. No one has seen God people see how we behave on a regular basis, don't they? They see the quality of our love. Have you ever heard the quote from Gandhi? He is quoted as saying, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. This is where our talk must be backed up by our walk. Just speaking like a Christian doesn't necessarily make you one. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 18, we are told, Let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And in James 1, my very favorite verse, Be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. People will sometimes believe the things that you say, but they will almost always believe what they see you do on a regular basis. As many of you might, have, might know or have heard, I used to spend a lot of time in prison. Prison ministry, that is. And one of the things that I heard from many, many residents is that it was so good, the thing that I guess impacted them the most 
was how good it was to spend authentic time, eye to eye, heart to heart time with another individual, someone who was not pressed or not doing it for any other reason other than their welfare. Showing love by addressing their most pressing need, which was having someone look them in the eye and communicate to them that they were worth getting to know, that their identity was not the worst thing they, they, ever, they had ever done. Listening and loving them without judgment was the key to breaking down the walls they had put up to keep themselves protected inside the prison. It is no different on the outside, just harder to see. It takes a greater commitment of time and much more perseverance to see the needs of our brothers and sisters and the community we live. So many have bought into the lie. The world tells them that everything they need can be found on the screen of their phone or tablet or laptop. The things of this world will never provide the love and acceptance and compassion of another living soul who stares us in the eyes and communicates God's love by just being, seeking to know us without expecting anything in return. We read in 1 John 2, verses 15 through 16, Do not love the world or the things in the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world. The desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, the pride and riches, these things come from not the Father, but from the world. The best way we can love one another is by modeling the love of Christ, reflecting his love and sacrificing our time, our talents, our treasures and tasks, and perhaps one day, even our lives, all for the love of one another. God sent his only son into the world to be our redeemer. His love was manifested in the sacrifice he willingly made for us. As we heard earlier, in this is love. Are we willing to sacrifice, to love another, even when it's hard or painful or full of disappointments? Loving someone is never easy. It takes everything we have and a lot of times everything that we are. But the rewards are eternally great for the one that we are loving and for our relationship with our Heavenly Father. In all the years that I went into the prisons, I always came away from the experience blessed beyond anything I could have imagined. All the long days and hard work had a huge impact on the lives of the residents, but it also had a huge impact on the team as well. When we love as Jesus commands us to love, we will be blessed just as much as the object of that love. Trust in God's promises and step out in faith. You will not be disappointed. Have a great day. May God bless you and your family. Be safe. Amen.